Hello everyone, this is Creeping Net with a Nintendo video that doesn't involve me uh, horribly playing NES games. Hmm. So what we have here, my funny angle, my original 8-bit NES. Yeah, this isn't the one I grew up with as a kid, this is a composite I built about 20 years ago. So yeah, everything you've seen on this channel recorded with an eight, original real 8-bit Nintendo, it's been with this one. And some of you are probably wondering, how the hell does he still have this thing 20 years later, 30, 40 years later, probably almost, and um, still has it working? I do maintenance on my game consoles. When these get old, there's some maintenance that has to be done, just like anything vintage, just like my computers, just like my uh, guitars. They'll need some maintenance and some TLC every once in a while. As you can see, she's a little yellowed. I'm not even entirely sure how that happened. This thing has been away from the sunlight a lot. I think it's just the regular nitrates and the Nintendo plastic. It looks way worse in person than it does here. So maybe I'll try Retro Bright, but then I've heard that doesn't do anything. And then there's a part of me, the guitarist part of me, that thinks, Hey, leave it like this. Let it tell its story. Anyway, as we know, this is the original uh, Nintendo Entertainment System model NES 001, AC 9 volt 850 milliamps, 85 Nintendo. I still think this is an early one because it has the sticker before the thing, at least the cases. Yeah, so. Of course, mine's still got the little cover intact on the bottom and that little thing intact there. I don't think I have all the screws in it. You have uh, six screws, one here, 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 and here, all across the bottom of the case. And I don't have all of them in this. I was going to kind of just show Nintendo maintenance, because, you know, when these game consoles get older, you have to do things to keep them happy. And one of those things is on this particular console is that bloody 72 pin connector. I've never bought a replacement 72 pin connector in the whole time I've had any NES. I've been using the OG original Nintendo ones all these years. Probably to all the Nintendo engineers disdain because then I won't buy a new console because mine will just practically live forever it seems. And it just had a screw fall. So now you got all the screws out, back over, and there you go, it comes right off, there's that other one. And inside you can see it's a lot more gray there than it is there. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, I see some dirt in my vent. Yeah, it's actually not too bad in here considering how long I've been running this thing without having cleaned it or anything. Of course, I still just go through it with a brush every once in a while and just sort of brush crap out. And here we go, we got one. My cap isn't bulging, that's good. This thing still runs like fact <coughs> factory new. Anyway, you can tell I've been I've worked on probably a million of these. I used to fix them for my friends and you know. I used to do all kinds of stuff with these, just you know. Fix them for my friends, rebuild theirs. Pretty good clean cartridges. Oh yeah, and by the way, because of the way I have this thing set up, I never have never blow on my carts. Ever. And guess what? It's a good thing, because back in the days when we used to blow on carts, I killed a copy of um God, what was it? Blades of Steel that way. I developed a short across two pads because it started to corrode because all my all my on it. Oh yeah, and I just got this. I'm having to rebuild my collection a little bit this year because I uh, sold a whole bunch of crap in the middle of last year. Um, so I no longer have Super Mario Brothers 2 in boxed. So I went and just bought this. I'm working on getting the whole Castlevania series too. The uh, Netflix series has really kind of spurred me in the wife's interest. Anyway, um... 
Yeah, so I still work on all this stuff. Sure I'll pop top off. All right. Now we got down to the motherboard. There's two silver screws here, these two gold ones here. You can tell I've done this way too many times because I just like have it by memory now. Yeah, and I torque all my stuff down really, really, really heavy. So, kind of just taking the inside of the NES that I've been using all these years. I don't like the mod mine. I like it the way they were in the 80s. I like them to be a bit like Mad Max's Back on Black or Stevie Ray Vaughan's Stratocaster. I like it to have a story to tell. <laughs> I mean, as a, this was one of the first 8-bit uh, Nintendos recorded on YouTube that wasn't recorded by someone pointing a camcorder at the TV screen. Um, anyway, I'm going to pull this sucker up. Oh, yeah, there's another screw here. I keep forgetting about these two on the RF modulator. You saw how delicately I pulled on that. What have we got here? We got a piece of tape. Not sure where that came from. Oh, I know what that's from. That's the original tape for one of the little gamepad doohickey things. We've come a long way since when I first started doing this stuff. I remember when I first started in high school, it was literally like... <laughs> first time I opened up a Nintendo, I was like, oh wow, look at all this stuff in here. And then when I opened up an Atari 2600, I was like, holy crap, there's hardly anything in here. Wood grain four switch, then I got a heavy sixer. And yeah, what they say about those is 100% dead on. All right, and then that whole assembly lifts right out. You got your player one game, you got your player two game pad right here. You got your player one right there, and that's your power cable. And I'm just gonna kinda, I don't even disconnect them, I just pull it off and just be gentle. I wanted to point out something here that I did. So let's bring it up close, as close as close can be. So, as close as close can be. So let's tilt this away a little. Point my thing a little further. All right, here we go. And let's pull this up in front of the camera. So I wanted to point out something about this chip right over here. This is your Nest 10 chip. This is the lockout chip for your 8-bit Nintendo that causes it to flicker the screen and do all the annoying, aggravating stuff that causes your kids to stupidly blow on the carts and cause them to develop um, shorts across the pads due to condensation. Water makes a great conductor until it's conducting things you don't want it to conduct. <laughs> Anyway, if you look here, across the pins, you'll notice one of these pins is gone. This one right here, pin number four. Because ICs are counted, this one's upside down. That's the notched side of the IC, I believe. Yep, that's the notched side. So right here would be your notch. One, two, three, four. So that's your fourth pin. You count from one here all the way to the maximum pin right over here. So, we're on pin number four here, and pin number four just ripped right out. Ever since then, my life with this thing has been just stupendously great. Because <laughs> I haven't had any problems with it flickering much anymore. But I wanted to garn I wanted to go ahead and fix some Nintendo myth Nintendo myths. Nintendo myths about this stupid thing. First off. This is not magical. First off, this port here, the one that you can rip the bottom out of and rip the bot. First off, this port here, the one that you can rip the bottom out of, that's not an, that's an expansion port. That's not some kind of secret thing that allows like the space police or whatever to sneak in and spy on you or whatever. People believe such ridiculous gibberish. Anyway, we're gonna pull this puppy out. This has to pull up. Oh, yeah, let's back it out so you can see what I'm doing a little more and get it off my shirt because you're not watching me talk about Loverboy shirts now. <laughs> um, she getting this right in the video. 
Here we go. So this net, you have all the screws out, you have to pull it forward. This is the thing that makes the NES the toaster style NES. This whole mechanism here. And how it works, if yours doesn't go down, there's a little pin in there and it goes back and forth. So when you press it down, it locks it down. It doesn't, I don't know if I can give you a good enough view of it to see it work, but yeah. And that right there kind of puts some weight push down on the cartridge too. We're going to clean that up. But right now our key focus is this little jerk right here. A 72 pin connector. This is, well, let's dust some stuff off first because this thing is really looking kind of grisly in some spots. I believe this is an early revision motherboard too that I have here because this might actually just have been the 1985 one. I don't know. It's been a million years. They used to have two of these, but then I sold the other one because I just didn't see a point in uh, continuing it. I prefer to run my wires down in the bottom. Puts less strain on the cables. Of course, you have your reset and your power switch. Oh, yeah, it still had some power in it, too. Now you're playing with power. Capacitor power. This little guy likes to store a charge. Nothing lethal. Anyway, it just pulls right off like a game cartridge. Like that. You can see all my pins actually look pretty darn clean. Um, I'm going to show you some tricks here that I use when I'm uh, fixing and cleaning Nintendo stuff, though. So one of my first tricks, we're going to take this NEC Versa manual for batteries here. One of my first tricks I use on any game console is I clean the connector by sticking a piece of paper in it like this. This is cheaper than those cleaning kits and it does just as good a job. I mean, right here's the one for the bottom. That's never a problem. This top one, mine don't really get that dirty. Like if you look there, you can see um, on the edge a little bit. Right there, if you look at that edge. Oh, it's turning up on camera actually pretty well. So if you look right about there, you can, you could have seen it there. If you look right about here, you can see where there's some dirt that's been rubbing off. So I just do that. And I try not to get one that's too thick. I just use a folded over piece of paper or a single piece of paper over a piece of cardboard. I'd rather it have more give than the other one. And as you can see, it's uh, cleaning the, as you can see right there on that edge, it's cleaning all these pins off. That's one of the first things I do. And I haven't cleaned the connector on this NES in over 20 years, actually. But it's reliable. Um, usually I get alerted to when I need to do this by a different behavior than just the flickering screens. Like you'll plug in games and games are a little dirt, you know, games will start showing up on screen, but they'll be all jarbled or your games show up on screen. Your games don't show up. Um, anyway, I'll show you how the cartridge goes in there. It plugs in that way. It presses down. It pushes the contacts in. That's how it works. Pushes it down, pushes contacts across. So I usually go in here with something, uh, kind of small and wire like like this which is like an eject tool for sim cards on cell phones makes a really handy tool for this and then what I do with this is I just kinda stick it in the connector in between these pins and I just try to grab them and pull them up just a little you don't want to pull them too much because if you pull them too much then you can just stick your cart straight in and it works um, <clears throat> it's a fine art. It's a fine art that's really difficult to master. Anyway, so I just go in there and let me try and catch this on it. So I just go in there and I just kind of grab it by the side and pull it up. And I just do this for each one of them on the bottom and on the top. And I don't do it too much because you don't want to overdo them. This can take hours. Um, sometimes I can look in here and I can tell what pins need it because if you look really closely here in the connector, 
<coughs> I don't know how well that can focus. <laughs> but if you look at the connector here pretty closely, you can kind of see that um, these pins right here, well, these pins up top here, not well, if you looked really close, you could kind of see that they're not all exactly perfectly level. So, like this one over here kind of sits a little, like this one over here, the first one sits a little lower. These are usually the two worst ones or the two outer ones down here. And the one on this side, I believe, is the one that connects to that Nest 10 chip. And, um, yeah, as you can, is I know you can't see this on camera, but that one's just a hair too low. It's about a millimeter or so. So I just sort of go up behind it and sort of lift them up, you know. That's how I do these. I just sit there and I pull them out. Sometimes I'll go into the top side and pull these guys down too. And get a little more of the top connection going. The top ones are generally not as much of a problem from my experience. I go through them all and I try to push them all down a little more. On the top ones you can kind of tell because if you push them down they stay a little lower. Try to push them down three times. So I'm just kind of doing this. So I do the top ones too. I just want them to all kind of stay there and not be a pain in the neck. The top ones are easy. You just do them that way. Just sort of bend back. And I already can see they're sitting much lower like they should be. I know they're pushed in a little more, but I like them to be pretty tight. There we go. So now my top ones are aligned. The bottom ones, again, you'll probably you'll need something like this with a little bit of a hook on it. I used uh, I used my uh, pliers to actually pull this piece up. You can also use like a bobby pin or something. Of course, just reaching underneath each pin in the connector and just pulling it up a little. And you know they scam you with this sometimes. Sometimes when they're selling you new 72 pin connectors, I don't think anybody makes these anymore. So I think what they're really doing is they're just selling you these after they've done what I'm already doing here. Just, just you know, hook in. Um, a little trick on these is you, and it's hard for me to get a good capture on it, is you go up and back behind them. You try to get up behind the pin and then move kind of like a motion like that. So you can get up behind the pin and then just pull on it very gently, just lightly. And that'll do ya. You know, this is how I keep an 8-bit Nintendo alive well past its life expectancy. All these are looking beautiful now. Oh, come on. The middle ones are a little tricky to do. And I usually suggest starting left to right because you're pushing on the next pin as you're pulling it up. And the next pin over to be pulled up. So I'll just pull in all these up. And it'll probably be good for another 20 years, knowing the way I do this, because I'm pretty gentle on these. Just a matter of twisting it up. Yeah, I can already see this is going to be much better now. Oh. And I've done this on numerous NESs over the years. Normally I put on a good album while I'm doing this. Uh, this one i got to get a little further back. And sometimes you just have no other choice but to reach back there a few times. It, it, it can be tricky to get in there and then pull it up sometimes too. Like this one here really wants to put up a fight. But you want to be careful when you're doing it because you don't want to make the situation worse. So that's how I'm doing this. I'm just pulling the pins up. <sighs> But yeah, this is just maintenance on these old consoles. I mean, these things probably won't last forever. There'll probably come a time where American Pickers will come over to my house and they'll be like, they'll have some new guy who's into video games. And he'll be like, hey, he has an 8-bit Nintendo. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you $500 for it. They're already nearing that point. Yeah, I just bought a Retron AV. We need to do a review on that. 
well actually I didn't buy it I got I got it as a gift earlier in the year and I just haven't really been recording the retron stuff I've been doing uh, and I got the best games for testing those Dragon Warrior 4 I'm gonna be getting Castlevania 3 soon a copy that doesn't have as crappy of a label this one's really weird this one right here is kind of funky okay. and finding the best way to grab these is just to go as far back as you can and hook under them like that okay. so I'm getting my groove back on this you gotta get because they kind of just fold over at the end and then you know sometimes you end up next to one that doesn't want to play nice like that one you just want to make sure it's a it's a focused task that's what it is so I'm just going in there each one we're almost across the whole thing yeah I'm gonna do these last few up close so they might be off camera yeah, we're going to put them in there and we're going to play video games with them. And the reason I do this is because every hobby I do, everything that I do on this web, on this freaking channel on my website is done in a budget. <sighs> Most people today when they do this stuff, they're like, "Oh, hmm." Yeah, all right. I'm going to spend a bunch of money, and it's going to be a prestigious hobby. I started collecting Nintendo in 1998 when these things were cheap. Back then, a copy of this, this cost me 30 bucks, people. Back then, a copy of this cost about $2 at your local thrift shop. <laughs> yeah. Super Mario Brothers 2. I mean, any one of the Mario games back then, they were like dirt cheap. Now they're expensive. Now we've got it all back together. You can kind of see that I actually got them all pretty well balanced now, including the top. Actually, you can see the top's a little more gloss. Oh, no, it's this side. Anyway, as you can see, they're a little more even now, and the top's even a little more uh, shiny. You can't see too well, but yeah, that's what my connectors look like. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about why these connectors screw up, too, and it's my fault. This guy is responsible for killing your 72-pin connectors sometimes. Just saying. Um, I'll continue to use it because I don't mind this hobby, and you saw how fast this is. Or, you know, I don't mind doing this. Speaking of, I need to get back into playing, playing, uh, doing some corruption videos with this again. That's fun. Go back to the old school way of doing it. Come on, stop getting on the online with your little bleepers and beepers and cheaters and stuff. But I know how the algorithm works. Well, that was half the fun of the old school corruptions. You didn't know how the algorithm worked. Or whatever inside these cartridges. You just knew... You plugged in a code, it did something funny, and then you made a video of it. That's how it worked. And then you made a whole list of codes and edited it together, and then everybody tells you, don't show that to anyone. That is the most cringy thing you've ever put together in your fucking life. And by the way, the Game Genie Crazy Codes thing, when I started doing that on this channel back in 2005, that wasn't, or 2006, that wasn't the first time I'd done that. I actually uh, learned some things in video productions and did a full-on video setup in my mom's living room when I was about, I don't know, 16. Made a horrific video of it that was horribly cringe and showed it to the band and they were like, don't ever show that to anyone. That is the most horribly cringy piece of shit you, anyone could ever put together. <laughs> Well, it was. It was me laughing maniacally over Game Genie codes. That's why I did it the way I did it. That's why I choose not to talk most of the time, actually. Yeah, getting this part on is a pain. So, you gotta make sure this clip right here, this little clip ledge here, goes over that. I've had times where I've 
open these things up even from the thrift shop and you can tell someone's been messing around and it doesn't go together right so there we go like I said now we got this little clippy piece here on the underside I wanted to show you this is the clippy piece that needs to go over the motherboard right here I have never seen anyone show that detail on any Nintendo reassembly video so I'm doing it for you here because nobody else talks about it just like back in the day with Fender Mustang tremolos and other stuff that I'm into. Yeah, here we go. So now we got it put all, all put back together. Got two white screws to put here and here. So those will just screw in like that. Mine are a little stripped out because I've done them a couple hundred times. Oh, let's move this forward. So you can see the whole NES while I'm working on it. Yeah, we're working on an 80s console. It's only appropriate to wear an 80s shirt. <laughs> anyway. There we go. We got this all put together. Alright, and we got these two back here that go into this RF box back here. I'm probably the only person who still uses RF on his NES. Everybody is all about Sony PVMs and composite and SCART, and I'm like, no, nope. I'll run it composite. Or I'll run it RF. And the thing is, my RF switch has a bad cable on it, so it fades in and out. But there's nothing wrong with RF. Actually, that's another thing, and maybe I should teach people about in the retro gaming side on this channel. How to properly hook up an RF video game system so it doesn't look like crap. <laughs> let me tell you, growing up, we didn't even have, in my house, we didn't have composite. We didn't have component. We didn't have... HDMI or upscalers. We had only one thing RF. <laughs> so you screwed that little coaxial cable into the back of your TV as tight as you can. A little trick sometimes in replacing the connectors so you can make sure that you actually have it put together well enough that it actually does a good job. Oh yeah, and by the way, I'm never removing this uh, RF shielding from my stuff. I don't like my guitar amplifier playing Dragon Warrior when I'm not playing Dragon Warrior. That's a new thing right now, actually. People playing, um, showing their amplifiers picking up radio stations and ham radio. I had a guy up the street, he literally sounded like he could have been a trucking buddy with the snowman from Smokey and the Bandit. I'd be in my house playing Master of Puppets all of a sudden, I hear, yeah, Roger! Yeah, he gonna he gonna need to pick himself up some stuff when he got on the way to get home. Sound like I was I was waiting for him to start talking about old Smokey. <laughs> and we got Smokies on our tail. We gotta go ahead and get move on. We gotta get this beer ship into the Auburn Ale house. <laughs> Yeah, is Stranger Things going to ruin that song like they did a deal with God? <laughs> Alright, come on. This is where having... You know what, folks? Having big appendages of any sort is not always an advantage in life. And that was just proof. <laughs> Now the real joke though is why in the heck why in the heck do I like skinny guitar necks then? Hmm. There we go. And we put her back together. 
actually, before we put her back together, I'm going to clean the outside because this top looks pretty dusty. And yeah, I'm using spray away for this stuff. I like this stuff. Available at fine auto parts stores everywhere. It does a really good job of cleaning. Yeah, let's get some of that dust off of here. This poor thing. It's been sitting in the TV hutch for four years. And it just lives in there. And doesn't really get to see the light of day very much. But yeah. Take care of your stuff. It'll take care of you. I'm living proof. You got so much old shit. And then you get all these people, when are you going to buy a new one? When the old one becomes too expensive to fix. Plus, I like to have tangible copies of my stuff, so they actually, they can't suddenly one day on Amazon go, sorry, you can't have that anymore. We don't have the sponsor from that manufacturer. Yeah, they can't tell me you don't own it. You will own nothing and like it. No, I will own everything in my house and you will like it because I won't buy your crap then. <laughs> I already been down that path before, before all this. Let me tell you another little story real quick. Way back in the 2000s, I wanted to get a little game called Postal. And I think we might have forgotten a screw or two. Did we? Yeah, we did. I think. Yeah, it was the two that go in front here. <laughs> Lucky me. Ugh. Yeah, so I wanted this game called Postal. And I could have gotten on eBay and hunted for a copy. Now let me show you a little trick. This is what needle nose pliers are for. You just sort of stick, if you got a place that's too big for your bit fat income fingers like mine, stole that line from Police Academy 6, um, you just use this little guy to carry it over there gently. It's a little dusty there. I think I'll do some wiping off. It's not really too bad in here, actually, to be honest. I think the worst game console I ever saw the inside of was actually a Sony PlayStation that I took apart that was completely dead. But of course it would have been the worst. It had an entire gallon of milk poured in it, it seemed like. And those of you with the dirty minds are working overtime. Anyway, screw that front one in. Yeah, we're going to we're going to screw it in like you do the cylinder heads on your car. Now we put that one in. Now we put that one in. I think I may even have a decent enough replacement in here in my uh, Versa pile on the other side. Yeah, I need to visit them again. I wonder how they're doing. Nothing. That's what they're doing. Alright, do I have any screws in here that are... Something that would fit. Oh yeah, this would probably be a good time to kind of show you the difference between a wood screw, plastic screw, and some others. This is a wood screw. You can see it's got coarse thread. This is what we call a flathead screw. Here's a pan head metal coarse grade screw. Completely different. Here's a fine thread screw that you'd find in your NEC Versa. Alright. I like holding my screen on. What? You thought there was just one kind of screw and it just did everything? Huh. The plastic 
If you want kind of a coarse thread screw, but not like this. This is another flathead wood screw. I mean, it could work. Actually, it just did fall in there. But I'm not going to use that. Yeah. Somewhere back there, I've got a bin full of screws. We'll put one in there, and then we'll test. You forget about it. There was only five. It's gonna take me 15 minutes to try and find one screw to do the job. Do the job that is already being done by five. There's just no reason in bothering. But yeah, there we are, all back together. Let's go ahead and um, put this sucker over here. Have you watch my uh, lunacy unfold? So, let's go ahead. We got Nintendo plugged in. We got the other thing going. Sometimes you might have to push the game in and pull it out a few times to get the pins to line up just right. I had to do that. Um, but yeah. Ooh. There you go. Let's turn off that light. There we go. Though you can't really see it. And trust me, it's on screen here. There you go. Anyway, that was fixing the NES uh, through composite. Let's bring that signing out.